So I want to ask you, what is the heaviest thing you have ever carried? What's the heaviest thing you've ever lifted? Well, for me, like, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking back to whether it was back to my college days or high school, college as an athlete, bench pressing and lifting. But the one, and yeah, I probably lifted heavier weights, like in a weight room. But the one that really sticks out in my mind, this happened when when my wife Papua and I were dating, and it was the first time I went back to see her family. She grew up in Pella, Iowa, middle of nowhere, cornfields, just small town Iowa. And the first time meeting her parents, I was terrified because I knew they didn't exactly like the fact that she's dating a white guy. So this was, this was just this was a, a terrifying, very scary, nervous experience. And so we got there, and, and it turned out to be okay. But this, this moment that sticks out in my head is they had this giant, this giant display case, chest of drawers, cabinet thing in their mudroom. And this thing was easily probably, probably eight feet long, cabinets and this and that. It, it was just massive. And they wanted to move it. They wanted to move it from this wall to that wall. Well, what better time to move a gigantic piece of furniture when they have like this six-foot giant in their house? It's true. I'm, I'm a foot taller than anyone. This is what family pictures with Popo's family looked like for me. Every single family picture just looks like this. <laughs> I, I, I just can't get around it. So here I am. I have this giant. I walk into this house, and, and of course, I'm like, oh, are you kidding? Anything to try to ingratiate myself to the family, earn some good bonus points. And so we line up, and, and I wish I had a picture of this, because here's me on one side of the cabinet, and here is Pofo, her mom, and her dad all on the other side. Well, we managed to lift it and rotate it and get it up against the other wall. But, but I, always, I always laugh at that because I think of the, the weight differential here. And you know what? And the truth is, whatever, um, whether, you're carrying, whether you're carrying physical weights or emotional weights, there's one thing that's true. There's one thing that's true about heavy loads they are exhausting. Carrying a heavy load is exhausting. And the reality is we all carry heavy loads. Whether it's demands of work, demands of family, emotional stuff, we all have burdens. We all have burdens that we're carrying. Now some are big. Some of you are carrying big burdens. Some of you are carrying small burdens. Some of you keep your burdens very private. Some of you wear your burdens on your sleeve. You'll post it up on Facebook. Everybody knows what you're going through. Some of you like to share your burdens. Others like to, you like to keep it private. So now, however, however you deal with your burdens, your weights, the truth is we've all got them. So I want to ask you, how do you deal with your burdens? What do you do with the weight you carry? Do you keep it to yourself? Do you generally try and keep it private? Do you ignore it? Maybe you're one of those, I, that's kind of me, I, I'm a bit of a denier, so I'll, I'll just pretend things aren't bad, and <laughs> just pretend they're good. Um, or maybe, so maybe that's you. Maybe you just want to ignore it. Or maybe you, you work harder. You try harder to solve whatever your problem is. You try harder. You get amped up and you work harder, whether it's more hours at the job, more hours at the gym, try to be a better son, daughter, whatever. You work harder, okay? Or how about maybe you're someone who likes to talk about it. So you seek someone out and talk and you just, blah, 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 blah. Okay? Maybe that's, and that's therapeutic for you. Okay? So I want, I want to go back. How do you handle your burdens? What do you do? Now, whatever you do to handle your weight, God's got something even better. And that's what we're talking about today. Because you see, at, at River Life, we're all about hope and healing. 
hope and healing for second and third gen Hmong. And this passage we're looking at today is a really familiar passage, and it's an incredibly hope-filled passage. It's one of the most hopeful things that Jesus ever said during his three or so years here on earth. And so it's out of Matthew 11. You've probably even heard it before. If you've been around church, you've heard this verse, these couple verses. And um, if you haven't, even if you haven't been to church for years, you have probably heard this passage before. Okay? But I, w- I'm, I want to be able to hopefully add a little bit more to it than you've heard in the past. So this is, it's out of Matthew, Matthew 11. If you want to follow along in your own Bible, in your app, um, up on the screen, however you want to follow along, but Matthew 11, 28 and 29. So Matthew 11. You could flip or click to it. Here we go. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Doesn't that sound great? Don't you want some of that? Especially if you've got a heavy burden right now, that is a relief. So this this is Jesus' gentle call to intimacy with him. This is his call to relationship, to being with Jesus. Not working for Jesus and doing for Jesus. No, this is his call to be with him. So let's talk about the first sentence. Let's start there. Here we go. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Well, it's amazing because weary, this word weary, this conjures images of a person tired from work or a long journey, and you're, you're tired. And then burdened, this idea of burdened pictures this person caring. He was tired from carrying a heavy load. Weary and burdened. My guess is that a lot of us in here can fall into one of those two categories. Weary or burdened. Now, before we go on with the passage, we have to ask ourselves, what makes us weary and burdened? How do we get so tired? How do we get weary and burdened? Well, the Bible has three answers to that question. Consistently, three consistently three things come up through Scripture, from Genesis to Revelation. Three things come up that cause us to be weary and and burdened. So first, first one I want to talk about is sin. Sin causes us to be weary and burdened. Now sin, these are the things we do. These are the, these are things we do. They're choices we make. And these choices, these are when we disregard, we blatantly and clearly disregard God's call, God's command, God's desire for us. The Bible calls it sin. And and there are all kinds, I mean, the Bible talks about all kinds of sin because God has a desire for us. And when we go outside that, that's sin. And in all sin, we hurt ourselves and we hurt other people. So whether it's Anger, jealousy, lying, sex outside of marriage, getting drunk, greed, overspending, porn, whatever your sin is, this sin we collect along the way weighs us down. And with each sin, we carry more and more of a burden. Now, the Bible says consistently that sin separates us from God. It distances us from God. It makes it harder for us to experience him. It makes it harder for us to hear him. It makes it harder for us to sit with him because a perfect God cannot sit in the presence of sin. That's why Jesus Christ died on the cross. But then when we return to sin, 
we start picking up the heavy loads again and we put them back on and we start burdening ourselves with sin. So if God feels distant to you, if God feels distant, it might be because of sin. So that's the first thing. That's the first thing that burdens us. Okay? The second thing that burdens us is situations. <clears throat> now, situations, these are things that happen to us that you might not have any control over. These are the pains of life. And some of you, some of you have family pain where you, you, you've had pain and hurt in your life and abuse, physical, sexual, verbal, emotional abuse, and you're carrying those scars around each day. And that's a burden. For some of you, for some of you, it's the weight of family. It's that responsibility you want it, that people look to you to solve problems, to be the good one, to, to provide financially, and that weight of family is a burden, and you're feeling tired of trying to be the one to always help your family. All of this, all of these situations. Some of you have bosses that you can barely get through the day because of. But you gotta have, the, you gotta keep the job. You can't quit, and so it's a burden. It's by no fault of your own. But so, some of you have bosses or workplace scenario, situations that are difficult, and they create a burden on you. And all of that weighs heavy. Now the third thing, the third thing that the Bible consistently talks about that creates burdens in our life is stuff. Now, stuff. These are, these are all the things that we love. It's money, bigger job, better paycheck, bigger car, nicer car, a new phone, a better looking body, a better looking spouse. <clears throat> all of that stuff of life that we want. And, and there are times in life where you go through wanting stuff and your heart is set on things. And it creates a burden. And you carry that burden around. And then when you get some stuff, some cool stuff, you get a new S8, all of a sudden in February, you're going with the new S9. Your tablet's looking really old, you want to upgrade. Your car's a clunker and everyone else seems to have cooler cars than you. New car. And you carry these burdens along with you. And it gets tiring. Because you start carrying a lot of weight. You know, Jesus told this incredible parable about farming. Now, I never did farmer's market with my parents. I know some of you did. Probably a lot of you did. Some of you still do. But Jesus told this incredible parable about farming. And he said that seeds, th there are a few reasons why some seeds don't grow. And this was a metaphorical parable like Jesus often told. And he said that, that some of the seed didn't grow. And there were three things that caused it not to grow. The worries of life the lure of wealth, and the desire for things. And all of these are things we carry. And they create a burden when we keep wanting more. And we're not satisfied with what we have. And we want more. And we want more. And we want more. And we just keep adding burdens onto us. Because we want more. Sin, situations, stuff. So what do, we, what do we do with all this weight that we go around life carrying? Well, um, let me tell you a story. When I was in high school, I, I got certified as a scuba diver. 
Uh, my dad and I w both got certified, and we went scuba diving together. Scuba, it's wonderful, it's, it's amazing, uh, but you know what? Scuba diving is exhausting because we, we, we drive up, we had this old junker van that we threw all the stuff in, and we drive up to the beach, we gear up at our truck, and, and the, the truck, it was usually a ways from the beach. You, you gear up, and, and scuba diving has about 40 pounds of gear. Not unlike the weight I have right now. 40 pounds of gear, and then you stick yourself into a wetsuit. So you know, you, feel, you, you begin to feel like a little kid in a winter snowsuit. Like you can't move, you're carrying the weight. And then you had to walk all the way from the parking lot down to the beach. It was the most exhausting experience ever. But that's what carrying burdens feels like. It is uh, exhausting. And that's the same when we're weary and we're burdened and we're walking around with all of this. It is exhausting. It gets difficult to do anything else except just keep yourself together. You start having a shorter temper with your kids, with your parents, because you're already a little afraid. You're already tired. So you snap a little faster. Or you want to complain more about work. Stuff that usually would just sort of go off your back, slip, you'd let stuff go. Nah, you're too tired. You're grumpy. That annoying coworker just set you off and you snap back at him because you're tired of carrying your burdens. It makes everything else harder. It makes hearing God harder. It makes worshiping at church harder. Heck, it makes attending church harder because you are burdened down with weight and you're spending 90% of everything you've got just to keep it together. Ever felt like that? That's what happens when we get burdened and weighed down. Well, how do we take a load off? How do we take a load off? Well, the answer is in the, pack, in the passage there. Let's, let's go back to it. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now that's sounding really good to me about now. Now in this passage, Jesus gives four, excuse me, three commands. Three commands. They're called imperatives. Whenever you read the Bible, pay attention to the imperatives because gold is found in the imperatives. Following Christ is found in the imperatives. Okay, so let's look at the first one. Okay. Come to Jesus. The second one, take his yoke. Third Learn from him. So, let's do the, talk about the first one. First, come to me. Come to Jesus. The rest of our souls begins when we come to Jesus. Now, that can mean one of two things for you, depending where you are with Jesus right now. For some of you, that could mean Believe in Jesus Christ for the first time. Make that decision to believe Jesus. And whatever you want to call it, it goes by a lot of names around churches. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Say yes to Jesus. Receive Jesus into your heart. Whatever you want to call it, it comes down to coming to Jesus and saying, I am yours. You are mine. It says, making a decision to believe Jesus is who he said he was. And then when he died on a cross, he died for you. So some of you, 
that's your first step today. You want to unload a burden? Come to Jesus. Believe him. Follow him. And unload your burdens. Now, for some of you, you've made that decision at some point in your life. You've made that decision to follow Jesus. So for some of you, what that means is turning away from wherever you're running to and instead running to Jesus. Instead running to Jesus. And you make that decision. To, you, 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 whatever you turn to for relief, whether it's food, alcohol, gambling, shopping, porn, whatever, sleeping, binge-watching Netflix, whatever you turn to for relief, you turn away from that and turn toward Jesus. And you take your burden and you drop it at his feet. And trust me, it feels good. Second, take his yoke. Take his yoke. Okay, now, we, we, we have to back up a step on this one. What's a yoke anyway? Right. Well, so a yoke is a harness that connects two oxen. Looks kind of like that. It connects two oxen. Yeah, there are single ox yokes and, and, and other things like that, but the most common one and the one that they used back then looked roughly like that. So when Jesus says, take his yoke, here, here's another picture, here's a, a real life picture, that's kind of what it looks like. Um, and so when Jesus said, take his yoke, what it means is for you to come up on one side for Jesus to come up on the other side and you lock yourself to him. Because the, the reason you, have, you use a yoke is that you get more work done with two ox working together than one ox working alone or even two oxes working alone. You get more work done. It's more productive. It's better. So you know what it means? Take, your, take Jesus' yoke it's going up to him and attaching himself, excuse me, attaching yourself to him. So that's his call. Attach yourself to Jesus. Have you attached yourself to Jesus? Now, I'm not talking follow Jesus. Jesus is up there, and sometimes you're following him, but sometimes you're wandering off by yourself. Sometimes you're wandering this way. Oh, oh, let's get back to following Jesus. Woohoo! Okay. No, 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 no. You lock yourself up next to him, and you, you throw away the key. That's, that's the way. That's the way to yoke yourself to Jesus, to take his yoke. You connect with him. You partner with him. You stay close. Because just like two oxen is better than one oxen, you and Jesus is better than you by yourself. So, third one. Learn from him. What does it mean to learn from Jesus? Well, first I want to ask you, who are you learning from? Who are you learning from in your life right now? They say that you become the average of your five closest friends. So who are your five closest friends? Who are the media outlets you follow? Who are the bloggers and the Facebookers? Who do you follow? Who do you consume each day? That, that'll say who you're learning from. So Jesus says, you know, you want to unload some burdens? Learn from him. Learn from him. You can learn, learn from him through the Bible. You can learn from him at church. You can learn from him in a life group. You can learn from him about watching movies of him, listening 
to the Bible. There are all kinds of ways. You can learn from him by, by spending some time with people who are more spiritually mature than you, people whose faith you want to emulate. You can learn about Jesus. But nothing beats going up to him and spending time with him. You want to learn from Jesus? Read the stories about him. We've got a book with four chapters, four books in this anthology called the Bible. We've got four books in there all about Jesus. You want to learn from him? Go read some stories about him. And he, Jesus, will speak to you personally today. Because the Jesus that was alive 2,000 years ago is the same Jesus who is alive today. The Jesus who healed the sick, the Jesus who gave sight to the blind, the Jesus who freed people in bondage to demons is the same Jesus who can heal you, who can give you sight and free you from your bondage. We just have to learn from him. Now, it doesn't mean you don't learn from other things. There are great places to learn. So that's not what I'm saying here. It's not, it's not to become a, a, a Christian closet person and all you read is Christian stuff and Christian bumper stickers and Christian breakfast cereal and Christian, no, okay? That's not what I'm talking about. But are you learning from Jesus? There are a lot of ways to do that. Come to him. Take his yoke and learn from him. You could start with any one of those. Today, in service today, in the next 20 minutes, you can start with one of these because you're carrying a burden that Jesus wants to release. So whichever one of these is on your heart, Come to Jesus. Take his yoke. Attach yourself to Jesus or learn from him. 20 minutes. We're, we're going we're gonna to sing a couple more songs here and during this time. Come to Jesus because Jesus wants to release your burdens and give you rest. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rest we have in you. That is a gift, Lord, because we are tired. I am tired. Lord, and for everyone who is tired here, you promise an amazing thing. Rest. We don't deserve it. Lord, there's nothing we can do to earn it. This is your gift to us because you love us. Lord, so let us all turn to you to find rest. God, speak to each person here. Speak into their heart. Let them know. Tell them what to do to find the rest they so desperately want. Give us rest, Lord, and let us be with Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen.